Hello there, and welcome to the recap of the second match day of the finals of the Skilling Open. This fascinating match between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So. Uh, day one was just unbelievable. No draws, they just exchanged blows left and right. Lots of drama, a lot of nice moves. Uh, everything like we want to have it. Uh, two wins each, so heading into this day, the match is tight. So we're just going to dive right into game one. Wesley So had the white pieces and Magnus Carlsen had the black pieces. Let's have a look at what happened. E4 by Wesley, same as on day one. Wesley opened with E4. And a surprise already by Magnus, who has been, well, playing E5 or the Shrestnikov, uh, more or less, the last few years. But he goes for the Karakhan, uh, I guess, trying to avoid... Uh, the preparation of Wesley So, who is extremely well prepared, as we saw when he saved the match day one with his line in the Sveshnikov with Queen A3 and Queen A3. I referred to the match day one video for that. But okay, C6 uh, must have become uh, must have come as a big surprise to to Wesley. And we have the advanced variation of the Karo Khan, and Wesley decides to go for a line here with Knight D2, and the idea is a quick Knight B3 to try to stop black from playing the freeing break, pawn to c5. We have development here, knight d7, knight to f3, h6. Very often it's useful to give this bishop a nice square here on h7 on the Karakhan. Bishop comes to e2, we have a5, questioning the knight, but white wants to keep it on b3. Bishop e4 check, c3 and bishop back. So the world champion feels that well, A, uh, opening up this diagonal and weakening it, and also weakening the cover of this bishop is useful. We'll see if that matters in this game. It may or may not, but if the world champion does it, it must have some, uh, you know, some merit. Knight to e7, h3, bishop now goes back. And black is a little cramped, but very solid. He now plays queen b6, knight e1. So white is either eyeing the d3 square with the knight uh, or going for some action on the king's side, perhaps with f4 at some stage. For now, knight f5 by Magnus, finally trying to get this bishop into the game. It's always a, a little bit difficult to develop these two pieces, but Magnus has managed to do it now. Bishop e7, queen g2, bishop g6. White was threatening g4 when actually the bishop was hanging, so we had to protect the bishop a little bit better. And now, c4 by Wesley. And this turns out to be actually a big mistake. A blunder. Magnus takes on c4. Queen takes c4. Of course, you can't take with the bishop, because then a discovery here, uh, hitting the queen, so we have to take with the queen. But now a very nice tactic by Magnus. Knight takes d4. And the problem here is you can't take with the knight, because, among other things, I have knight takes e5. There's also some danger here, but knight takes e5 is sufficient to get a very good position here for black. So after this, uh, Wesley took with the queen, but now he takes b3, and Magnus has won a pawn. He does have double pawns here, uh, but usually this is not a big problem for black. The pawn can come to g5, and the f-file could actually be useful for black in many cases. However, uh, Magnus's next move, perhaps not the best, I think it's safe to just play king f7 here. I mean, if there are further checks, we can go here and here, and the king is absolutely fine, and we take the f-file. But he castled. And this allowed Wesley to more or less get into the game with bishop takes h6. And this, well, if Magnus were to take, Wesley can force a draw, which he would do, having been at a disadvantage earlier in this game. But Magnus wants to play for more, so rook f5. Bishop now comes back, so uh, Wesley got the pawn back. But the game goes on. F4 now, he had to cover the pawn, and G5, undermining the defense of this pawn. E6 now, this pawn could become weak. And after G4, Magnus took on F4. He's done the exchange, but these pawns provide tremendous value. And after rook F4, Magnus played bishop f6, this bishop becomes tremendous, the peace play for Magnus is just absolutely gorgeous in this game. 
let's see, to E2, and it all went downhill pretty fast here after rook f2. There's d4, and, and these pawns are just too strong. This pawn is coming in, so Wesley had to give up a piece here, which Magnus took, and now he has two pieces for uh, a rook and a pawn. But the black pieces are so active that uh, this is more or less winning for black. This looks maybe optically good, but the f5 pawn is so weak, we can always you know undermine if we have to. But the main main thing is that the the black minor pieces are so active that white is just in trouble here. Let's see what what happened. Rook d8. This is of course indirectly defended. Bishop d4 check would, would regain the material. Now he gets a pawn, another pawn, and these connected passers are simply too much here in this position. Knight d3, knight back to b4, and knight back to d5. And now all Magnus has to do really is to just to push the pawn. So he push, puts the rook behind the pass pawn. And after protecting the c6 pawn, he just starts pushing. And this pawn just runs. Running, running, running. B3. There's a check, but there's no mate, so the king is fine here. And then B2. And after knight d5, Wesley resigned. So Magnus win the first game with the black pieces on his birthday. Looks like it might be a fairy tale birthday for Magnus, or will it? The resignation is obvious, knight c3 is coming, followed by b1 queen. Let's say king somewhere. Uh, yeah, we just have to, have to maneuver the pieces a bit, even c5 knight before to block. But white can't do anything. This pawn will simply queen. Okay, on to the next one. On to the next one, yeah. Now we have to switch it up. Uh, not like this, though. Not like this. Now Magnus has the white pieces. And just like on day one, he opens with d4. We have the same opening as in uh, day one. And yet again, we have this line. They, they're repeating the line that they played yesterday. Game where Magnus won quite nicely after this same opening here. Knight c5, bishop e6. White gets the bishop pair, but black is a pawn up and tries to make it as difficult as possible to win this pawn on d4. And of course, white tries to win it and claim the adds because of the structure. Rook d1 and rook c8. Now, yesterday, Magnus played bishop b3. I think the rook was on d1 rather than e1. He played bishop b3 yesterday, and we had this. No, the bishop was already on e3, so it's slightly different. It's slightly different. Because then the bishop was on e3, and uh, there was rook c8, knight c5, and we had this trade. So maybe it's Magnus who has deviated with, with uh, rook d1, actually. In any case, we don't get the same line that uh, we saw yesterday, which Magnus probably felt that uh, was too, too easy to hold. When you improve the line a little bit, Magnus managed to squeeze out an excellent endgame win, but felt like Wesley would be able to draw. Which isn't such a bad result, given that Magnus is already up on game, but he wants to win with the white pieces and just put this match away. Okay, so the pieces come out, but of course, black is still holding on to the pawn, but white has the bishop pair. Let's see what happened. Bishop to d4. Black tried, tries to finish the development. Bishop to d6. Uh, Magnus wants a trade here. G3. And of course he wants to keep the bishops. So bishop G5 check. Knight in G5. And now he has the two bishops against the two knights. Usually a very good deal. But he's still down the pawn. H6. Keeping the bishop. Knight to B4. Rook C7. And now we have the pure bishops versus knights. Note that the knights though are up a pawn. Bishop d2. Immediately showing the strength of the bishops. If you take the pawn, I can play bishop c4 and you already are dominated. And this knight will drop. So, the other knight comes to d5, a3, and knight to d3. One thing that black has got going for him is uh, you do have a lot of pieces on light squares. And very often when you're playing against the bishop pair, you want to have pieces on, on one color complex and try to play around that complex. It seems that 
that might be Firstly's strategy here. Okay, f3, knight back to c5. I'm wondering what happens if, if he just plays. In case of b4, uh, looks tempting, but maybe the pawn just becomes too weak and we, and we can force some trades. In any case, Magnus decided to take on e4, liquidate the center, but now he's just down. We no longer have these double pawns. Maybe this was a moment where white could have uh, improved. Let's have a quick look here if, uh, if, it be, if b4 can actually be played. I'm wondering just what we do. I, of course, we can attack the bishop. I, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, that's just good for black. Okay. So b4 is not a good move. So he took on e4. So Magnus having trouble winning back the pawn. He's still down the pawn. Should be able to hold with the bishops against the knights. But now the e-pawn is running. And the knights are strong. They protect each other and now the king is coming in. It's coming into d4 and, and somehow white can't keep it out. The bishops lack scope. Wesley is just keeping the bishops at bay, not giving them scope. This is like a masterful magma squeeze actually on the other side. The king comes into e3. Now he passes the pawn to e3. <laughs> Very uh, nice play here by Wesley. The bishop are still on the board, but they're, they're becoming very passive. And now he improves the position, brings the king in. And now a nice maneuver, knight b1 to d2. And because we are threatening to play knight f3 check and e2, the bishop has to come back to protect e2. But now uh, Wesley comes in and he should be able to combine some threats like knight here and knight here and win this a-pawn. So Magnus, well, doesn't see anything good here. Takes the knight, but Wesley easily keeps control here. He takes the pawn and yeah, gets another one right away. Uh, the one on b4. The knight just comes comes around and eventually we're going to win that b4 pawn. Everything's under, under control here. Very nice technique. And the pawn is won. Have the king d3, simply e2. And yeah, not another moves left here. King a3, we can play because you can take it. I'm gonna queen, bishop f5, b4, and Magnus had to resign. So Wesley strikes right back in game two. So six consecutive games with uh, with wins. Yesterday it was all white wins. Today so far wins with the black pieces. Now games uh, three and game four were drawn. Game four was especially lifeless. Um, game three, uh, I don't think either party was in, in you know, any danger at, at any stage in that game. So we are going to move into the tie breaks. Okay, so now we are actually in the tie breaks. It's a blitz game now, two blitz games. And Wesley starts off with the black pieces. And again, e4, stick it to his guns. He lost the first game, the rapid game today, but let's see if he has an improvement in mind on the Atwam's variation. He does, he plays knight f3, he changes the variation here. The first game didn't perhaps go according to plan, so he changes it up here. We see a similar development here, obviously, by black, knight e7, a4, a5, knight b to d2, knight d7, and knight b3. So a similar variation in many ways. Bishop goes back to h7, bishop d2, and queen b6. h3. So the game starts out very similarly. We can now see knight to g6, queen e1. The difference is that we didn't get this bishop b4 stuff, so there's no pawn on c3. So now there's an attack on a5. There's something slightly different. Bishop comes to b4. And now it takes. We have a trade. And bishop d3. So the position takes on a completely different character. And even white might have to watch out for some a5, uh, rook a4 here to simply win the b pawn. So play c5 here. Wesley takes, and pawn takes. 
and rook a5. He wants to win the pawn on c5, but there's uh, the simple bishop b5 check and king e7. So Magnus has activated his pieces. I mean, uh, I mean the rook is coming over here, and he's hoping to win uh, the pawn back, and then he should be absolutely fine with a good structure. But first he needs to win the pawn back. Rook c8. C3, though. Nice idea. He just wants to take the pawn, and if you take, there's b4. And Magnus actually doesn't see a choice here. Uh, if you play b3, then rook e1 enables us to play knight d4. We call it the pawn, and we're simply going to pick up this pawn here, defending c5 and attacking a5. So, very nice move, and now b4. The rook has to go back, and rook c1. So, it seems like Wesley has everything under control. A nice extra pawn. Knight comes into f4, he takes the pawn, bishop e4, and now he pushes a5. So this just looks like things have gone horribly wrong for Magnus in this one. G5, trying to get some counterplay. G3, the knight goes back. Uh, now we have to trade, which we do. Another trade here, and now knight h2. This bishop will probably be pushed back soon here with f3. Knight e5. The first it doubles, and Magnus tries to get you know some tricks going here, but it looks like it's simply too late. Uh, White has full control, an extra pawn. The act, yeah, the very real and dangerous possibility of pass pawns on the queen side. So, I mean, the, this is a nice move, but it doesn't really do anything at the end of the day. C6, D4. Okay, hoping for some play on the eighth file, but Wesley has everything under control. He plays rook to f1, rook check, and we have this trade. But Wesley had everything figured out here. Bishop here, and now b5. This will be followed up by a pass pawn on the a file. We see that all of a sudden Magnus is up a, up a pawn, but it's the quality, not the quantity, that counts in this case. A very nice play by Wesley. A6 takes takes, and yeah, he's going to get control of, of, of this file. Some desperation stuff there by Magnus, but trying to get control of the e4 square, but uh, it's simply too late because we d we're just going to take over this one instead. And yeah, Wesley wins the first blitz game. So now, the onus is back on on Maggie, on Magneto, on Magnus Carlsen. He has the white pieces in this tiebreak game. So let's go all the way back. And he does open with d4. Let's see what happens now. We get the same stuff as we've seen before. The Tarosh. And this time, instead of c takes d5, these lines uh, that have been quite dry. Magnus decides to go for e3. Changed it up a little bit. We have a trade here, a6, looking a lot like the uh, queen's camp accepted. b5, bishop goes back, and now Magnus trades. Slightly surprising since he needs to win the game, but he is one of the best endgame players ever. And if 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 there was ever a time, now is the time to show it. Knight b to d7, seemingly giving up the bishop pair, but Magnus doesn't want it, he plays knight a5, but this one he wants, he wants this bishop, he takes on b7, rook takes, so now Magnus has the bishop pair, something to play around with, bishop d2, rook c7, rook d1, bishop e1, just keeping the bishop in reserve, again he has the bishop pair, but now there's no pawn deficit, so this is a much better, better situation. So Magnus may be able to, able to nurture this into something. And bishop d6 looks like it's a move that is allowing something that perhaps black shouldn't have allowed. And Magnus now takes on b5. So this he can do because after takes and knight takes, there's a double attack. You have to protect the bishop, so that's why bishop d6 was a bad move. And now knight d7. So we're going to give up uh, two pieces, but we're going to get rook and two pawns. And this, generally, is a good trade for us, especially in the end game, if, uh, if our pawns can start rolling. Bishop e5 was played by Wesley. Now here, Magnus should have probably played rook b1. And if rook b1, you don't have to take immediately because these are just hanging. For instance, a move like this, you cannot just take this and play b3. And you see that the pawns will start rolling. The pawn will come to a4. 
Compare this to what happened in the game. After bishop b5, Magnus took immediately on c8 and played rook b1. But now rook a8, and this is attacked, and you have to play a3. And you see that there's an attack on this. So the rook can't move, and the people also can't move because of the attack on this. And after knight d5, there's also no bishop c3. So white is struggling to, to get the pawns going. So Wesley is keeping him at bay at the, you know, at the moment, rook uh, d to c1. Perhaps he should have played e4 here just to take control of some squares, play f3. At some stage, maybe keep you know, the pawns on the light square to complement the bishop. And at least take control of the d5 square, uh, e4, uh, d5 square with the e4 pawn. Instead, now Wesley plays f5 and does not allow e4. So he's getting a stabilized knight and still keeping the pawns at bay. Black goes for space himself here on the uh, king side. Rook c2, g4. The king comes in. Well, black is very active here, as you can see. f4. We have some trades. And knight takes d4. Taking this one. Still not easy to get this going because this is pinned. So some technical problems. Bishop h4. e4 now. Knight comes into e3, hitting the rook. The rook goes back, and knight takes g2. Here, this move looks really tempting. I'm just intending to take here next move, but Wesley goes with the other knight. Computers like the other one significantly better. But let's see, he takes on b2 anyway. Bishop c5, and we have some trades. Wesley takes on c1. There's an in-between move by Magnus. But as you can see, the trades are happening fast, they're forced, and they're too much for Magnus to be able to do something. He's even down a pawn here. He can win the pawn, but the last pawn is off the board. It's a draw. Magnus won the first, uh, sorry, Wesley won the first blitz game. Draw in the second one. So Wesley wins the match on Magnus's 30th birthday. Uh, not the script the world champion was hoping for, but I mean, Wesley, He's proving that he, he might be one of the few, you know, that has the ingredients to be able to beat Magnus in, in a match. He's beat him, beaten him here. He also beat him in the Fisher Random Chess 960 World Championship. So, yeah, so he's our guy. He's the champion. Uh, so that concludes uh, a long week for me, for you guys probably as well. i uh, been making a lot of videos. But it's been really, really rewarding. I have a tough time pronouncing rewarding for some reason. But yeah, uh, again, you know, I always appreciate the support. If you, if you can throw a like, I would really appreciate it. And hope to see you soon with, with some different kinds of videos. Uh, I've been putting them on the back burner, but I want to make some more uh, educational content, which I hope you guys will like. And hope to see you soon. Bye for now.